Next guest founded an organization in Washington, D.C. that advocates for Uyghurs' rights. She has a personal connection to all of this. It's been nearly four years since her sister, who is a retired doctor, disappeared in China. In response to the U.N. report, Rishan Abbas writes, The OHCHR has waited far too long to deliver its report. The truth of China's atrocities has once again been documented and there can be no shying away from the obligation to act. Stopping genocide was a foundational purpose of the UN and it must be upheld now. Rishan Abbas joins us live. Uh, Rishan, thank you very much uh, for your time. We've, we've heard the response. Um, from you, we, we've seen what you've said, that it's time to act now. But do you believe that this report is going to ignite change? Thank you, Alini, for having me. After all the delays, as you mentioned earlier, the speculation about whether the report was going to be released, it is a relief to finally see that it's being published after we have waited for years, months, days, and hours to the minutes. Um, the report itself confirms what the Uyghur rights organizations and our allies and activists and victims' families like myself has been saying for years. Um, there is a genocide going on. Uh, going on. Um, also, the UN report yeah. doesn't say that it's genocide. Um, China's war on humanity is blatant. It is a war on human dignity, and it's a war on women and the children and the freedom and the democracy. However, it, it gives too much uh, credence to China's claims that um, there is anti-terrorism or anti-extremism operations, which has been used as a smokescreen to hide their true actions. So the people and the countries and the entities has been waiting for this report to take action. Now you have it. Now it's your turn to take action to stop this genocide. Yeah. This is a personal you know, story for you as well. Um, you haven't seen your sister in four years. Could you describe to us what you and your family have been through and whether you've had any communication with your sister over this time? When the genocidal policy started in early 2017, with more than a million innocent Uyghur people disappeared to the forced labor facilities and the concentration camps in our homeland, I was being very um, uh, active and being vocal, the speaking out against the genocidal policies. My husband's entire family was missing since August of 2017. For five years now, he has no information on his parents, if they are still alive or not, three of his sisters, their husbands, and this uh, brother and his wife, 14 of his nieces and nephews. So when I spoke out about this, and he uh, participated on a panel in Washington, D.C. in early September 2018 as a retaliation for my speaking out against the Chinese regime. They took my sister as a hostage. My sister is a retired medical doctor. She's a non-political, a very kind and a generous person. But her only crime is being my sister and being an Uyghur. So after she was taken away, the Chinese regime responded to my actions of calling for her release, saying that the, the Global Times Network basically labeled me as a liar and said that I stole other people's photo and claiming my missing relative. But then I quit my job, became a full-time activist, and tripled down my efforts against China's genocidal uh, policies. Yeah. Then they charged my sister as a criminal on the terrorism-related charges in December 2020 for 20 years in prison. So which one? Am I the liar or my sister is the criminal? Just like right now they are uh, reacting this report by uh, spreading all kinds of lies. They have been uh, denying the existence of those camps at the beginning. And yeah. then after overwhelming evidence, they called those are vocational training centers or re-education centers. Rishan, it must be extremely hard, especially knowing that you were so vocal and then the, the government retaliates, as you say, against your family. I want to read to you what the Chinese uh, mission to the UN has responded to the report. 
All ethnic groups, including the Uyghur, are equal members of the Chinese nation. Xinjiang has taken actions to fight terrorism and extremism in accordance with the law, effectively curbing the frequent occurrences of terrorist activities. That is the response. Um, what do you make of that? Because they're basically saying, I mean, the, the direct correlation, the undercurrent of that statement is that they're fighting terrorism. So their response is typical and expected. You know, uh, China has a pattern of denying and lying when it comes to anything that's uh, uh, any kind of truth that's spoken against them and it is uh, genocide, current genocide. So let me ask them this. If what they are saying is the truth, you know, they are fighting extremism or terrorism. The recent leak of the Xinjiang police files in uh, May 24th by the uh, Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation in Washington, D.C., and Dr. Adrian Zanz. There are 73 years old grandma taken to those concentration camps because she prayed several years ago. There are grandpas for 60, 70 years old. What kind of national threat a person like a 73 years old grandma can bring? Yeah. When they are saying radicalized Muslims, the Chinese government is making Uyghur women's bodies a battleground of this genocide by forced sterilizing them and giving them forced abortions, and as well as forcibly making them marry to Han Chinese people. If the girl refused such a government-sponsored uh, forced marriage, she and her entire family will be taken to the concentration camps as radicalized Muslims didn't want to marry non-Muslim Han Chinese. Yeah. So, we are not so proud that China thank you so much. We've run out of time, but, but we thank you for sharing your, your story um, and, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.